Okay, good evening. We'll go ahead and get started now. And just uh, to let those of you know that have recently joined, I'm Jen Santos. I'm the Deputy Director for the City of Santa Rosa Parks Department. And um, we're here today to talk about Dutch Floor Neighborhood Park and the master planning process that we're going to take you through. Uh, before we get started today, I wanted to um, introduce uh, folks within the city team that are working in the background. Uh, you'll see them as host Bernard, which is uh, Mr. Tim Bernard, who is the project manager for this project, and he'll be hosting behind the scene for us, helping us out today as well as host Ander, who is Emily Ander, a staff member here in Parks as well, will be helping behind the scenes. And I'll look to our consultant team to introduce themselves. Thanks, Jen. Hi, everyone. My name is Haley Watterson. Um, I'm with Plural. We're a landscape architecture studio based in San Francisco. We're happy to be here tonight, excited about this project. Yes, I am also excited. Thank you so much, Haley. Uh, I also want to take a moment to recognize um, those in your community government that are joining us today. We also have uh, Council Member Natalie Roger Rogers joining us, uh, viewing in tonight, as well as two Board of Community Services member, Carol Quant, uh, Chair of the Board of Community Services, as well as Terry Griffin, Griffin, Community Boards of Service member, and that is a council appointed board. Um, that helps us negotiate um, parks and recs items. So this item will at one point be coming before the board as well as council in the future. Um, so again, just wanted to thank everybody very much for taking time out of your busy schedules on a Thursday evening to join us to talk about uh, your park, your neighborhood park. Um, before we get started, I just have a few housekeeping things for us to go over. And so uh, panelists and presenters, please silence your cell phones and, introduce, um, and keep your microphones muted if you're not speaking. Members of the public joining this meeting will have webcams and microphones muted. If uh, you're phoning to, jo if you're uh, joining by phone and you choose to speak during the public comments portion of the agenda for privacy concerns, the host will rename you to caller and only show, show the last four digits of your phone number. Additionally, the City of Santa Rosa is committed to um, providing a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption and will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to, to participate respectfully or if necessary, the meeting will end immediately. Host Bernard, will you please explain how public comments will be heard at today's meeting? Yes, at the end of the presentation, the facilitator will open the floor for questions and answers, public comments. The host will lower hands until the public comment item is open. Once the facilitator has called for public comment, the facilitator will ask the public to raise their hand if they wish to speak. Those joining by phone may dial star nine to raise their hand. The host will then call on those who have raised their hand. The, mo the host will unmute your microphone for your comment and then mute you once you are finished speaking. A courtesy timer will appear while you are asking your question or comment. The facilitator, host, or co-host will respond to each question or comment as it is raised. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based on your response received. There is also the opportunity to ask questions throughout the presentation by clicking the Q&A feature in your Zoom menu or toolbar and typing in your question. The host will keep an eye on these questions and will answer them in writing as time allows, or will ask the presenter to answer them live at intervals throughout the presentation. Any questions not answered during the presentation will be addressed during the questions and public comment portion of the presentation. Thank you, host Bernard. And let's um, roll to the next slide. And while that's happening, I wanted to um, take this opportunity to let everybody know in advance of the presentation that if for any reason you need to leave, we do, we are going to post this uh, presentation in its entirety on the city's Recreation and Parks website, 
as well as we have some polling for you, questions we're gonna ask you today. Um, those questions will also be in a survey format on our website. If you have neighbors that weren't able to attend tonight or uh, if you feel like you need to leave, if you can't stay for the entire presentation, uh, feel free to uh, jump to our website. That information should be posted um, some sometime before the end of next, uh, the end of Friday next week, um, hopefully earlier in the week. We should have that up for you just in case. So if there's any, any time where you need to leave, feel free, this will be available for you. And so uh, just to get us started, we are going to um, uh, go through uh, several things, in it. Um, a site analysis. We're gonna look at the program and feel of the park. We're gonna review and look at Q&A. Essentially, we're going to um, go through funding as well, project goals and objectives. And we will also give you um, the schedule that we have prepared um, thus far for the master planning process. And we'll take you through that master planning process as well. And then our consultants, uh, plural, will take us through a site analysis of what is possible at the park and look at the program and feel of options we have. And as the host mentioned, we do have a question and answer period for you. So we have plenty of time for that. And we also have some really fun um, samples of park ideas from our neighboring uh, BL Elementary School. They did a lot of hard work already and have put together some great, uh, great information for you. Um, and let's see, we already have a question. Let's see if I can this to you. Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure to get to that. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and get started with our presentation. Next slide, please. So just as just <laughs> by way of um, where we were at, uh, you can see Highway 101 on the right of your screen and Highway 12 highlighted on the lower. And then the um, colored pink area is Dutch Floor Neighborhood Park and we have uh, the elementary school next to it. There's also some labeling of some streets so you can kind of get your bearings there. Um, next slide, thank you. And so when we talk about where this park, where this park is at and what sort of funding we have, uh, we think about it um, at the city in terms of quadrants. And hopefully you can see from this map, the quadrants, there are four quadrants in the city uh, where we collect and hold funding for projects like this. And um, your um, Dutch Floor Park is the little blue dot within the yellow uh, area of the city. And Highway 101 is shown in the black line in the middle of the screen, um, going from top of your screen to the bottom. And Highway 12 is left to right just for bearings. And um, when a developer comes to the city to develop a residential area, um, they can either provide the city with park land, some sort of park usage, or they can pay park development impact fees, which allows the city to um, purchase and acquire and build new parks as well as retrofit existing parkland. And that those are the funds we're using for that. So it's funds collected in this quadrant and they stay in this area to be used for the needs of this, of this quadrant. And we do have funding, um, enough funding for this project. Um, the council has already approved our contract with Plural and Associates to help us uh, guide us through the design process. And um, this, uh, the, the park is um, coming to our attention at this time because of its need to be, uh, the equipment is needing replacement. So we have two playgrounds at the park and uh, we have a list of playgrounds that are in need of replacement. And this has risen to the top of the list in this quadrant. So we are taking this time to, to delve in that, into that tonight. Uh, we are also taking the time to um, ask what else you would like in your park besides just replacing the playgrounds, um, if anything, or if you like it the way it is. So we're gonna ask you a bunch of questions tonight, but as far as the funding and location, this is how we think about it. Um, next slide, please. So um, this is a bit wordy, but essentially um, how we get started our process to take you through this is to look at updating a master plan. And the process we take you through that is the neighborhood meeting we have tonight is neighborhood meeting number one, where we're presenting information about what we're doing and what we're up to. We're collecting information from you all. And uh, we're also meeting with stakeholders such as our neighboring school 
And if there's any other groups or agencies we should be meeting with out there, we'll also be meeting with them to collect feedback. Uh, the next step will be um, neighborhood meeting number two, where we'll come back to the community with updated information based on the feedback we receive from not only this evening, but our online survey and other meetings we might have with stakeholders. And then our final meeting, meeting number three, is where we'll present um, a draft master plan that is something uh, that everybody has put hard work into, and, uh, and it's based on all the previous information we've received, and we can usually do the master planning process in three meetings. Some, um, some communities take longer. Uh, Coffee Park uh, neighborhood, for instance, took a little bit longer. Um, they had a, a little bit of a unique situation there where we're replacing the entire park um, due to the loss of that park in the Tubbs Nuns fire. So here we believe that we can uh, move through this within three public meetings, but if we need to have more, we can certainly do that. Uh, once we're satisfied as a, as a neighborhood with the um, look and feel of the master plan, we'll move to the Board of Community Services. Um, they are a council appointed board and we'll present this information to them and receive feedback as well as a re recommendation for council approval. That is also a public meeting where you can provide additional feedback. And then finally at the city council for approval, which is also our public process where you can provide additional feedback. Once that document is um, approved, then we can move into the construction process. Next slide, please. So some of you might be thinking, what the heck is a master plan? Here is um, some samples for you. So the one on the top is a sample of Kiwanis Springs Community Park that was recently finished. And essentially it's a graphic. It's a, it's a map, it's a plan of what the neighborhood or community has decided they would like to see as amenities in their park. And so Kiwanis Springs Community Park is a, is a large 20 plus acre park in the neighborhood. Um, and as another example, Coffee Park neighborhood on the bottom of the screen is an example of another master plan that was done. That is a neighborhood park very similar to, to our Dutch Floor neighborhood park. And so essentially it's just a graphic representation of everything we're gonna talk about and um, include in there. The plans, um, the plans can include things that don't get constructed right away. So they can in include um, ideas that we, you know, places where we'd like to go, um, such as Coffee Park. We, we had a lot of design ideas that went into, into that park. Uh, we were ultimately able through funding and donations to build all of the uh, items requested for that park. Uh, Kiwanis Springs, you can see completed master plan up there. It's not quite finished yet. We are starting progress on the community garden portion of that park, but we don't yet have a lot of funding, all the funding necessary to build that. But we put together this plan and we are moving forward and implementing as funding becomes available in those quadrants. Next slide. And so uh, we do actually have an existing master plan, which is really rare for um, uh, a, a park, uh, for Dutch Floor Park. And here's, a, here's the image of it. And um, it is a little bit dated. Dutch Floor Park um, is a little bit older, uh, but I am really impressed with the uh, beautiful master plan that was prepared uh, for this park, uh, which was a little bit unusual at the time. And um, the park itself is, reflects exactly what's being shown here. It's a beautiful park already, and we're really proud of it. Next slide. So just a little bit of history here. The park was formed in, in the 80s, and uh, it came on board as when the school came into fruition, as well as the uh, two subdivisions, um, and the park was dedicated to the city. Um, it was completed in 1989, and actually at the time was named Sunburst Park. It's um, a little under three acres. And of course, uh, for most of you know, there are two children's play areas, an adult fitness area and picnic areas in the park. In 1992, it was renamed to Dutch Floor Park um, after the city's longtime police chief. Um, and here we are today in 2020 looking um, to meet with you all. And we've hired Plural and Associates to help um, help walk us through the process of looking at how can we replace the uh, play equipment um, to meet current codes and safety needs within the park. 
um, and the fitness equipment as well. And so one thing that's very similar to, at Coffee Park, we looked at this park and noticed that um, the two playgrounds are very far apart from each other. So uh, we thought that there might be an opportunity to talk about that today. Should we move these playgrounds closer to each other or should they stay as is? And so we wanted to talk about all that with you and hear from your, uh, hear your ideas. And um, we'll get started now. So I'm gonna turn it over to our consultants to talk about our um, schedule and uh, walk us through the process of looking at options for this park. Thank you, Jen. Um, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, let's start off a little bit by talking about um, kind of overarching goals and objectives that we have for this project. I think first and foremost, we really want to create um, a safe, you know, and build on really what's already a safe and kind of welcoming park and, um, and playground. We want to improve the connectivity and accessibility um, and therefore the usability of the, uh, the playgrounds and the paths. Um, and enhance the park's beauty. There are lots of really beautiful mature trees on the site. It's a really lovely park. So um, making sure whatever we are doing is kind of enhancing and, and building on the, the good bones that it has. Um, and and um, as Jim mentioned, a, a big part of this project will be um, updating the two playgrounds um, that are ready for um, kind of a refresh. Uh, there's also an adult fitness area that is ready for an update. And then um, when we start to, to get into those program elements on the site, uh, we'll find ourselves needing to upgrade um, some of the other park infrastructure um, as we start to touch things around. Um, we'll be kind of required to, to bring other things up to code, including um, making the paths accessible um, and updating drainage and irrigation and some of the site furnishings. But today, I think we're really going to focus on the playgrounds um, and the fitness areas. Um, and, and we went through a little bit about the master plan uh, process. This is a summary um, that was described earlier. But just to give you a sense, there are many phases in this process. Um, after the master plan phase, uh, there's a series of construction sets that are broken up into different phases. Um, and they add levels of detail as you, as you move along. Um, so this kind of gives you a, a broad sense of um, the schedule that we're, we're thinking we can uh, achieve. But again, um, as everyone knows, schedules change and um, this may shift over time. But this is our current um, thinking. Zooming in on the existing conditions, um, we wanted to just highlight uh, for everyone uh, what the park looks like today. And um, we'll do that in these next couple of slides. So just to situate everybody, um, the Yellow Elementary School is up here in the top right. Uh, this pink outline represents the extents of the park. Um, we have Exeter Drive on the west and Whitechapel Way on the south. These are some photos of the park today. Um, this is in really pretty good condition given its age um, overall. This is that uh, edge of where the park meets the school, uh, meets along this edge of the basketball court. So some of the existing site elements that we mentioned um, are ready to be updated. Um, this is a view looking down towards the fitness area and one of the playgrounds um, in the distance, uh, looking down towards Exeter Drive. And then uh, some of, there's a couple of picnic areas that are spotted around the park as well. And currently, um, the two playgrounds are about 150 feet apart, uh, which is quite a distance and, and can be challenging if you have um, children, uh, multiple children playing in the two different areas to, to keep an eye on both of them. So that's something we wanted to, to look at as part of this project. There's also an adult fitness area that I mentioned, and it's located right next to that 5 to 12 um, kind of upper playground, um, and then there's a more of a tot lot, two to five age playground um, in this location. And there's a couple of picnic areas scattered um, around the park, and then a more um, centralized gathering sitting space uh, located just west of the larger playground. And just to take, take us all through an inventory of what's there now, um, there's 
four, this is the, the five to 12 year old uh, playground. And there's four swings. There's two slides, a spiral slide and a, a tunnel slide. There's one tire swing. Uh, there's a crawling uh, tube or tunnel. It's a couple of platforms and, um, and then a set of monkey bars. In the top lot, there's uh, two small swings. There's a small slide that's accessed by um, a small climbing ladder. And adjacent to that is a, um, a corkscrew ladder. There's also two spring riders here in the center of the page, a um, couple of sand excavators here in the foreground, and then a small seesaw um, towards the back. And this is uh, where the current adult fitness area is. Um, it's a kind of small grouping of elements that include um, bars, um, parallel bars here to the left. Um, there's some ladders, there's a sit-up bench and a pull-up bar. So that's a summary of uh, what is at the park today. Um, now we would like to start a portion of this uh, meeting where we start to gather some of your input. And uh, at this time, we'd like to switch over to a new platform and uh, to, to continue that, uh, to get, collect your input. There's a couple of ways to do that. Um, I am going to type in the question and answer the uh, link to get you there. You can also go to um, minty.com. I'm gonna place it in a couple of answers. The other way that you can get there is by going to minty.com and typing in this code that you see at the top of the screen. And once you get there, let us know you're there. You can hit this heart button here in the in the corner. All right, people are arriving. If you have any trouble, please let us know. Let's give some time for everyone to get to this um, platform. Let us know if you need help. You can click on the link in uh, a couple of places in the question and answer location. You can also go to minty.com and type in the code above. You can uh, do this on your phone as well. You can go to minty.com and type in that code. Um, and if you aren't able to uh, access this platform, you'll still have an opportunity to um, give us your input and vote on these things uh, at the, on the park website. Uh, there'll be a different uh, survey platform that you can do that if you're not able to join us tonight on this platform. But if you would like to and you're having trouble getting there, please let us know. While everyone's joining, um, I'll just review the existing site organization because we're going to talk a little bit about that now. The first series of questions that we'll ask are about um, the relationship of these programs uh, on the site and to each other. So we talked a little bit about, is there more um, kind of a relationship between the two playgrounds that are being closer could function a little bit better for families? Where might this fitness go? Is it a more centralized fitness area or is it scattered about the site? A uh, similar to the Coffee Park um, project. Um, so we'll be looking at a couple of options for how the site gets uh, organized. And thank you for everyone who has, has joined us. You can also join us a little bit um, as at any point through this process and Minty. So we've put together three um, options for how we might uh, arrange these program spaces on the site. And we'll go through each one of these in, um, in more detail. And then we'll ask you all to um, vote on which one you prefer. Um, and certainly, um, you know, we don't expect either one of these to be the exact answer. Um, there could be combinations of things. So we'll ask you about uh, your feedback with that as well.
the first option um, is looking at, um, you know, as we work through all these options, something we're thinking about is how to um, kind of take advantage of some of the flatter areas that um, are, have already been made for the playgrounds. So this option is looking at uh, utilizing that space where the existing five to 12 playground is um, and keeping, keeping it there and then moving up the smaller tot lot closer to it. They could be connected by um, more of a gathering space, a like picnic area. This is kind of your like your home base when you go to the playground um, where you drop all your stroller and bags and everything you have. I know I have millions of stuff with my daughter. <laughs> Um, and then using the, the, the flattish area where the tot lot was for uh, the fitness, adult fitness area. Option B um, is looking at keeping the tot lot where it is currently today, uh, but bringing the uh, 5 to 12 playground closer to it and locating it um, right in between these two existing paths. There is a um, kind of gentle slope in this area, but could provide some opportunities for um, some fun play options. And then adjacent to those playgrounds, um, having the picnic spaces um, that could be connected or kind of separated for each one of those play spaces. And then looking at the fitness, stringed along this northern edge a little bit further away from the, the play spaces. And this may be more of a, a row, there could be one to two. Um, exercise stations at each one of these dots rather than a more kind of centralized space. Um, and then this is option C, which is looking at uh, bringing that tot lot up to the five to 12 playground um, and combining them a little bit more, so less physically separated. Um, there may not be any barrier between the two spaces, but they're just kind of physically apart so that um, I think Coffee Park is a similar arrangement so that the, um, the clear division, but it's still very much a, the same space. Um, and the picnic areas would uh, you know, find themselves around this southern edge of the place, of the play uh, grounds. And then the fitness uh, layout, thinking of a, a larger circuit where you could potentially jog or um, you know, walk between each station and having that kind of wrapping around um, the edge here in blue. So just a summary, um, here's the three options that we're thinking about. Um, on the next slide, you'll be invited to vote, vote on which one you prefer. And what's fun about this program is that we'll all get to see the result, results come um, together so we can um, see what people are thinking. And then again, we'll ask if there's um, any combinations that you may see, some elements you prefer of one over the other, um, that kind of thing. So the voting is now open. Um, you're invited to um, let us know which, which one you uh, are preferring. And again, if there are some elements that you like of some but don't like of others, um, we can um, talk about that in the next slide. We'll ask for some more um, pointed feedback. There will be a, a 30 second um, voting clock so keep an eye on that. And again, if you um, aren't sure and you're still thinking about it or you're not quite ready to answer, there's gonna be that opportunity for um, you to provide feedback on the, on the park website. Thank you. Um, the voting is now closed. It looks like, um, pretty strong preference for option C. So I'd really love to hear from those of you who picked option C, what you like about it. Um, and maybe those of you who didn't pick option C, what you um, preferred in the other schemes, or if there's any other combination that you think we should consider, um, go ahead and, and type that into, um, into Menti and let us know your thoughts. And, it'll, and so, you know, they'll come up on the screen so we'll all see them together. Great, these are great, thank you guys. Keep them coming.
yeah, location of the playgrounds to the street is really um, important thing to be thinking about. Great, thank you everyone. The next thing we wanted to um, hear from you all on is what the playground might kind of look and feel like. Um, we have this opportunity to um, kind of dream here in the beginning of this process. So um, we invite you guys to, to do that with us. Of course, there are kind of budgetary and, and um, technical constraints to all these things, but um, I think right now we really want to um, kind of open it up and um, dream together a little bit. Uh, we've characterized um, some options, and of course there are more options than this, but um, we really were wanting to, to hear from you guys what the character of this, what these playgrounds um, should be. And so we'll look at um, a couple of options. We'll go into, into one, each one of them in more detail. And then again, we'll, we'll vote at the end and we'll talk about other potential options. Um, and I should also say that none of these are kind of like absolute. You, there's some merging of these as well. So we can talk about that. Um, so the first one is um, what we're calling natural, which is a, a playground that is um, inspired by, uh, you know, kind of natural um, structures. It's using more natural materials. This would um, be manufactured product, not kind of, um, you know, found wood um, for durability and um, maintenance, um, but something that may be kind of less prescriptive than some of the other types of playground um, where children are finding ways to kind of interact with it. Option B um, is something that may be more sculptural or uh, could be art that you get to play on. Um, again, this could be an off the shelf item as in the top right, that's customizable. Um, it could be something that's more custom, uh, but lots of areas to kind of explore with this. Um, option C is um, an idea about the playgrounds having a theme. Um, and since we have two playgrounds, they could be different themes, they could be the same theme. And what we mean by theme is that there is um, kind of a narrative to the overall playground. For example, uh, this one here in the bottom right is a playground that has a dinosaur theme. So these are these large eggs that have holes that kids get to kind of climb in and um, nestle in there. And there's various other elements around it, but it's all kind of built around this idea of um, dinosaur land. And it doesn't have to be any of these particular themes, but just as examples. Um, this other, this option D um, is for something that's more modern. Um, and what we mean by that is something that's more the cleaner lines, um, strong forms or shapes. The colors could be bold and or simple, um, things, like the, things like that. And then uh, the next option is for more of the traditional um, towers and platforms. Um, playgrounds that where you get to pick out a series of components and you put them together. And um, sometimes in these, the, the play is really prescriptive. So monkey bars, you hang on them, uh, slides, you slide down them. Um, they're great because kids know how to play on them. Um, and they're you know, specialized in, um, and, and fun. So here's a summary of the, the look and feel, what, what the character of the playgrounds might be. And um, memorize this slide because the next one will ask you all to vote. Um, and on this one, you will get an option of picking up to two of your favorites. Um, and then the next slide will ask you about any other ideas that you didn't see here today. Looking all pretty close, but the traditional has a lead. 
natural is coming up close behind with um, sculptural and themed following closely behind. Thank you all. Um, and then on this slide, you're invited to um, type in any other ideas around kind of character and look and feel that you may have um, or things you might consider or explore. Um, that would be great to hear from you all. And as a reminder, it will um, show up to everyone on the meeting. Yeah, my daughter loves the sand as excavators too. A couple comments about the blue heron, the Biela school mascot. Questions about sand. Lots of interest in sand. Every time someone types in uh, the same words, they get bigger. Um, so there's lots of uh, questions about sand and zip lines. Great. We'll give it a couple more, um, 10 more seconds here. Great, thank you guys. We're gonna move to the next one. There'll be, there'll be additional um, uh, opportunities for feedback um, coming up if you missed this one. The next thing we wanted to talk about is the, the components of the playground. Um, what are people feeling like are the most important um, components to, to be at this park? So we'll go through each one of these. These again, these are categories um, and there's, there's more than what we're showing here, um, but just as a starting point for us to understand what are the most important um, components um, for the playground. The first one is slides and gliders. Slides being your kind of typical slide. Um, it will be open. It could be spiral, straight slide. There's uh, gliders and rollers, which is the bottom image here on the left, um, which is a bunch of rolling um, bars that kids look to um, hang down. It's really great for um, multiple ages to use. There's swings. Um, all kinds of swings, tire swings, kind of standard swings. Uh, we're starting to see more now, um, more group swings like this one here in the bottom right where multiple kids can get on it and use it um, and work together. Climbing, um, climbing is a big category, but it includes um, net climbers, um, actual climbing walls like you see here in the bottom image. It could include boulders climbing or just stacked element, more free climbing. It could be more of like the logs that we saw in some of the previous images, um, climbing those. The next category is um, bars and hanging. This is really all of the elements that um, are kind of upper body strength. So there's monkey bars, there's rings. Um, there's this thing in the bottom right. Um, this particular one is called a, a trolley track. Um, I think zip line kind of falls in that category as well. The next component is towers. Um, this is the component that gives children that um, opportunity to get some um, kind of sense of enclosure, get some views. Um, it also is an element that ties together other elements like slides um, or uh, things like that. Um, the other, the next one is sensory play. Um, these are the things that really engage our senses um, and for playgrounds, a big uh, component of that is um, sound. So there's various sound uh, elements that can be incorporated as their tactile um, materials as well. And then the last three here, um, 
The one on the left is motion. And this is a big category. This includes um, the things that we love that move on the playgrounds, like seesaws, um, spinners, um, uh, the net, these kind of net spinning elements, all those things that, that move um, on the playground. They, the next category is called, we call it narrative play. Um, and this is the um, elements that are kind of like a scene or a set for like a, an acted out play or, um, and they um, help uh, kind of narrative development. So uh, the top image here is like a cafe or a small town. So children's act out selling food or um, doing things like that. So it's kind of a way to bring kids together to, um, to story tell. And the last one is, um, we're calling it learning play. And um, you've seen things, these elements kind of pop up around playgrounds recently. Um, some of them help learn with um, dexterity. Some of them have matching. Sometimes there's shapes that go into other shapes. Um, kind of more um, thinking and hands-on uh, elements. So again, here's the summary of um, the kind of major categories of, of play. And then on the next slide, we will um, invite you all to um, pick your top three. And then we'll, we'll talk about other things that we didn't see. So for this one, I'm gonna give you a little bit more time. We'll do a minute. And if, you having, if you're not seeing the question, um, the slide that I'm talking to, um, you can hit refresh on your browser. Sometimes that helps. Swings are in the lead. Always really popular play elements. Must always fold the playground. The children at Biella also love swings. Got slides and gliders and climbing and motion up there as well. And again, on that next page, we'll, we'll get to talk a little bit more about preferences or any other additional ideas that um, we haven't seen yet. All right, thank you. And now that opportunity to, to let us know if there's a, a component um, or a specific component that um, you feel like really needs to be here. Um, or if there's something we missed, please let us know. And if you have specific ideas about certain components for different, the different age groups, um, that's something you could let us know here. Um, if you have a preference in kinds of slides, um, whether they're spiral or straight, or um, since, since uh, swings are really popular, if there's, um, any preferences and types of swings? Or at least how do, how do people feel about um, these, these uh, kind of community swings where there's multiple kids required to kind of work together to, to swing? Seated zip line, yeah, there's a couple of uh, seated zip lines out there, discs you can kind of sit on. Those are great. Um, even some of the smaller kids can do those. Great, we'll give this one um, a few more seconds. All right, we're gonna close voting now, get your last thoughts in there and we'll um, 
go to the next set of questions. Now, before we um, go any further, um, we'd like to hear a little bit more about um, everyone who's here with us tonight. Um, so we have four questions that we would love to get answers from you all. Um, and I'll go through them with you. So the first one is, where do you live in the city? Um, and are wondering uh, about which quadrant in particular that you live. And again, if you're having any trouble with um, Minty or you're not on the same question as us, you can hit refresh on your browser. And as a reminder, there'll be um, another opportunity to take all these same questions um, on the city's website. We'll, we'll show that link uh, at the end of the presentation. Great, thank you all. And the next question is, um, we'd love to hear about how you found out about this meeting to help us with, um, with the outreach going forward. Great, lots from the postcard and lots from um, the yellow. That must be the, the parent square. Is that the, is that the name? Great, thank you all. Uh, the next thing we would love to hear about um, is how frequently you come to the park. You get a sense of um, your user, the usership here. We're asking, do you come? every day? Do you come once a week? Um, once a month? Or do you kind of never really come but you will when it's really done? <laughs> a lot of days get users, that's wonderful. I think uh, our, my, the neighborhood park next to me, we go almost every day. Someone in my family goes almost every day. All right, a few more seconds on this one. All right, we'd also love to know um, how far you travel to use the park. Um, I'm guessing that 50% of you will be in the five to 10 minute walk, given that you come daily, um, but maybe there's some folks out there who love it, who drive here. We'll give this a few more seconds. Okay, thank you everyone for giving us your feedback. It was really fun to see that all um, live with each other. Now we're going to um, go back to the Zoom uh, presentation. And um, so what you can do is just close the, the Minty uh, browser or uh, however you were looking at that and go back to the, to the Zoom window. And we'll, we'll uh, give everybody a little bit of time to, to do that. Thanks for switching over to Minty with us. Okay, what? thank you, Haley. I just wanted to thank you very much for that, walking us through options and what could be and, and, and what, um, what can happen out there to update the park and bring it up uh, to current safety compliance. We'll get started um, with the community question portion of this. 
and um, we have you know traditional looking timers and stuff but just so you know it's just as a courtesy so um, that it's you can and you could check it for yourself and see how long we are taking but um, we figure there's probably a lot of questions and answers out there and a lot of um, comments so uh, I'm going to turn it back over to our host to facilitate the question and answer period. Yes, I've lowered all hands. Please raise your hand if you wish to speak. <clears throat> those joining by phone may dial star nine to raise your hand. Host Andrew will then call on those who have raised their hands. The host will unmute your microphone for you to comment and then will mute you once you have finished speaking. The facilitator, host or co-host will respond to each question or comment as it is raised. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based on the response received. Okay, do we have any um, questions yet? Uh, look to our host to see who we've got questions okay. from. We have two speakers. Um, the name of the first speaker is Janelle, um, and the second speaker will be Donna. Janelle, I'm giving you permission to speak. You can unmute your microphone. Um, and can you let me know if you can see the courtesy timer? Yes, we can. Great. Your time begins now. Okay. Go ahead. Um, hi. My, my name is Mackenzie, and I'm almost seven years old. But also, I, I go to the park um, a lot, and, and I'm really looking forward to, ha to having it rebuilt. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a great comment. I appreciate that. The next speaker is Donna, followed by Nora. Donna, I'm giving you permission to speak. Can you see the timer? Hi, my name is Donna, and my daughter went to Biella, and we live right behind the park. And we were curious to know whether or not solar lighting could be implemented in the park for safety reasons and just to put a glow to this in the evening. And that's it. Thank you for doing this. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Appreciate that. And, you know, we'll definitely add that to our comments and uh, take a look at that. Uh, that would be a, a pretty big infrastructure change. So I appreciate that comment and uh, we'll definitely add it to the mix and take a look at that. Thank you. The next speaker is Nora, followed by Shaula. Forgive me if I said your name incorrectly. Um, Nora, I'm giving you permission to speak, um, and I'm going to lower your hand, and you have three minutes to make your comment. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nora, and I live by Exeter Drive. My question is, when it rains, the whole park sometimes is soggy, and so it's about drainage. And also, uh, um, are there any policies regarding the animals, because it's nice to walk the dog or cat, but we see some of the remnants of the cat poo or dog poo in the sand, sandbox. So thank you. I, I appreciate that, Nora. Yes, we, um, I don't know if you want to jump in, Haley, but we will be addressing the drainage. Uh, we do recognize that there is a drainage problem at the park. Um, so when we do this lovely update, we'll have some current drainage that will help so we don't have puddling and ponding. Um, and as, as far as the um, dogs, <laughs> we do have uh, Sydney or, or city ordinances um, that request folks uh, have a six foot leash and clean up after their dogs. Uh, and we definitely encourage that, but uh, we'll add that comment in and um, use it as part of our collection as we look at things we should be um, adding to this uh, park, you know, maybe some dog park baggies. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the next speaker is Shayla, followed by Valerie. Shayla, I'm giving you permission to speak. 
Go ahead with your comment. Your three minutes starts now. Oh, Shala. Thank you. And um, I'm wondering about cameras in the park for for safety, um, and that would probably go along with some lighting. Um, you know, my kids all went to Biella and I have a grandchild now that spends a lot of time here and he will be using the park soon as well. So I appreciate the rebuild. Um, I, I do really like the excavators that are there, which does require the sand. Um, and I know that can be a problem, but hopefully that can be worked out. Thank you. Thank you, Shala. Appreciate the, appreciate the comments. And uh, ca cameras are uh, another thing that would be a very big infrastructure uh, component. Um, when we look at adding cameras and other, we don't have any cameras in any other park except for Courthouse Square. So it would be a pretty, it would be a, pr a really big undertaking, especially we do uh, encourage, if we do have cameras, we would want it to be monitored. And so that's where the, um, that's where the cost of that could come into effect, but we'll definitely take that into consideration um, as part of the comments. So thank you. The next comment comes from Valerie, followed by Jean. Valerie, I'm giving you permission to speak. You may unmute your microphone and begin your comment now. Hi, this is my son, Benjamin, who's 11. I really want to keep the sand and I actually like the drain like the drainage where it doesn't work because I like playing with the water and like uh, digging tunnels and streams with the water and I think uh, the poop that you that the other lady said I think that's actually like clay at the bottom that when you dig to the bottom it like shows up and there's like hard clay stuff so yeah thank you Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Um, so I definitely heard that uh, sand, having a sand element going forward would be really important to this, to this playground area, as well as um, maybe some, um, a water feature of some sort. Uh, we, can, we can look into that um, and see what is possible. Because um, that is a nice sensory play feature to have sand and water together. So I appreciate that. Thank you. The next comment comes from Jean, followed by B. Jean, I'm giving you permission to speak. Please unmute your microphone and begin your public comment. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, my name's Jean, my wife Susan, and we live um, behind, well, partly the park and part of the school. Um, and so our question is more about um, fencing along there or is there going to be, uh, is Biella going to be blocked off from the park? In other words, are they going to try to make Biella closed from access to the park, or is it going to continue to be as now where the park just kind of goes into the school? And where would the fencing go if that was, if, if, if it is going to be separated? Thanks, Jean. I appreciate it. And, um, one of the things we've done is reached out to uh, the elementary school in advance to receive some feedback from them. And there, um, there has been some interest um, in uh, looking at some sort of boundary effect that kind of is a visual letting folks know that there's a difference between the school and the, and the park. Um, we haven't had any conversations about um, completely blocking, but we, you know, we're, we're here to listen and we'll take your comments and we're going to listen to the yellow elementary uh, team as well and and work something out but for the city's part there's and as far as I understand from Biela there's no interest to completely block off um, the access you have now hope that helps the next question will come from Steve followed by Renee I've given you permission to speak. Please go ahead with your public comment after you unmute your microphone. Hello, my name is Ron Say. We live on Whitechapel Court. One component that we really like uh, about the park and that gets utilized a lot is the uh, multiple park benches that are spaced out. It's nice to have them 
near the play structures, but it's nice to have them scattered throughout the play area. So I think that's something we like to see um, continue and all the shade from the trees that the uh, that are underneath the different bench areas. Uh, okay, thank you so much. I appreciate that comment. Yes, and uh, we agree that the benches that are spread throughout are a really nice feature, um, especially with the trees. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And the next comment comes from Renee, um, followed by Jamal. Uh, Renee, I'm giving you permission to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Zoom is telling me that um, we're using an older version of Zoom, so you won't be able to make your comments live. I'm so sorry. Can you please type it into the Q&A, and I will ask it out loud, and um, and we'll answer it. Yeah. Thanks for thanks, for, <laughs> Renee, for trying to reach out, and and there are ways besides this to get your comments to us. So um, yeah, you can type it in or. Uh, we have some contact information for you as well on the parks website and at the end of the uh, presentation today as well. So if, if you can't get it through tonight, right during this part, um, we'll take a look at that um, after this. Um, the next question or comment will come from Janelle. Janelle, um, I've given you permission to speak. Please unmute your microphone and begin your comment. Hi there. Thank you. So I'm sitting here with my children and we did arrive late to the meeting, and so I apologize if this was addressed in the first half hour or so of the meeting, but uh, my children were inspired by a comment made just a few minutes ago about uh, having a water water play. And uh, so now they're asking about splash pads or, um, you know, water play features with the bucket fills at the top and when it gets full, it dumps over and splashes the kids down below, or the water jets that shoot out of the ground. Is it possible to have an area in the park that incorporates that type of water play for these really hot summer days um, outside of you know a public pool, right? So that's my question, and and I don't know the scope of the park, um, but if that's possible. That would be awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Janelle. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you listening into the comments. And uh, you know, a really big spray feature or a water feature would would probably be a pretty big undertaking and um, have to be funded at a future date. But uh, we will definitely look at ways to incorporate water if there are in a smaller way. Um, one of the things that's important is the difference between a neighborhood park and a community park or a specialized park where we have spray grounds is uh, spray grounds require restrooms and you know there's all this huge infrastructure that goes with them and compliance regulations and and so that's why that we tend to have those in our aquatic centers, or we have some around uh, around the city. But uh, I am happy to uh, give you uh, some uh, information that is coming out soon that we are uh, changing out the wading pool at Finley Aquatic Center, which is not too far uh, from Dutch Floor, uh, and including a, a really lovely spray ground. And so, um, and we'll be inviting the community to participate in that uh, process as well. So hopefully um, we can do both for you. We can get you something um, water related um, uh, potentially at the neighborhood park and then uh, we'll have a bigger feature for you not too far away. Thank you. Um, there is another comment from Jean, but before um, I give you the floor, Jean, I just wanted to read Renee's comment out loud since she didn't have the opportunity to speak. Um, and she says, we love the sand and we would love to have the picnic area in the shade. Thanks, Renee. The next comment comes from Jean again. Please unmute your microphone and share your comment. This is actually Susan Arsenal. We um, live behind the park and the school. And there is a memorial bench there. Um, and will that be staying? That is one of my questions. And I do like the uh, ideas about keeping a little bit of the sand possibly and uh, 
you know, so, so I've got grandkids that play there. So uh, I, I also agree with some maybe safety lighting um, a little bit over there, although I, I'm hearing that that might not happen. Okay, that, that, sounds, that sounds good. I appreciate that. Yeah, we'll have to look into the lighting. Um, we usually do, you know, smaller you know, safety, safety lighting, something we can, we can look into it, but it does have a, a lot of infrastructure with it. Um, and then um, I think, um, yeah, I think that covers your comments. I'm sorry, please raise your hand again if I miss something, but I just wanted to thank you. Did you want to comment on the memorial bench? That's what it was. I couldn't read my own writing here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, the memorial bench can either be saved or if, if for some reason we need to replace it, we can save the memorial plaque and use it on a, on a new bench as needed. Um, we usually, can, but usually they're attached to the bench. And if that's the case here, we can certainly, we can certainly do that. Are there any additional comments? I don't see any more hands, but I'm happy to answer it. Oh, there we go, one more. Um, a question from um, Ben. Then I'm giving you permission to speak. Please go ahead and make your comment after you unmute. Hi, my name is Vin Tran and I am the principal at Viola. And I just wanted to share that I'm thankful for the city and plural for just allowing my students to have a voice in this project. Um, I haven't seen it where the CD does seek information from students and I think you guys went above and beyond to support our students' voices, especially even tonight. I was so proud of my students speaking up in regards to their ideas for the park because there are things that us as adults we don't consider when it comes to child play. So I just want to thank you, um, the city, for including us in this um, you know, this, this opportunity. Thank, thank you, Principal Tran. And I, I would like to thank you as well. And and uh, a little bit of information to the community is that uh, Principal Tran has been really welcoming and open to us, um, bringing our information and asking questions of the students. So we really appreciate uh, the feedback and, 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 and working with you and your students. So thank you. And we, we do have some of the work where we will show here at the end. Are there any additional questions? Um, are there any questions from the Q&A um, hosts? <laughs> are, putting that to our host to see if we can answer them now that didn't get answered yet. Um. Cars drive very fast on Exeter. Is there any chance to add a speed bump? Oh. <laughs> Can we work with the transit? Okay. Yeah, we will definitely, we'll um, pass that along to our um, traffic engineers to take a look at that. So I appreciate that. I don't see any other question. Well, when will the next meeting be? But we'll talk about that in the next steps at the end. Well, there's one more question from Janelle. Okay. Hi, sorry. Okay, so one more thing that I was thinking of with my toddler here uh, is a toddler play area specific. And so I've seen that at other parks like at Rush Creek Park, there's an area that's completely fenced. Um, and you know has a gate in and out of it uh ingress and egress and that's super cool for parents that are trying to monitor several children at once so i'm wondering about uh having a toddler specific play area like there is now but maybe with a short fence around it uh so it's easier for parents to uh, wrangle kids thank you thanks janelle we we definitely are including a two to five year old and a five to 12 year old playground where you if you're still able to unmute, were you talking about, um, well, I think we have 18 to 24 months. I think they're, Haley, maybe you can help out here. Is there something that's a little bit smaller age or younger age, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think, the, go ahead, Janine or Janelle. No, I, I was just gonna say, uh, I was thinking maybe the, the two to five, it doesn't necessarily need to be younger, but it may be an 18 to, 
18 months to five years old. I just really like the idea at Brush Creek Park, it feels very safe as a parent, right? When I'm monitoring and I, I can't necessarily see both children at once in that play area, but I know there's this short kind of pony fence around it. So my kids can't escape right into the larger park area. So when I'm monitoring just more than one child, uh, that adds an extra layer of security. And it's a great idea, I think. So uh, we have this small toddler area at the park now, but it's open and you can run in all directions. And also, you know, not that it's a problem, knock on wood, but somebody could wander off with a child, right? If a parent is trying to monitor several and a small fence uh, might just cut down on that possibility as well. So um, that's what I was thinking. All right, I appreciate that. I don't know if Haley had anything else to add on that part. No, I, th I think there's um, the two to five usually does include the younger kids too, the tot lots, and there there are lots of ways to provide barriers to keep them in. Um, we'll we'll definitely look at that. All right, so I'm going to look back to our host. Is there any additional? Any additional questions or if anybody else would like to ask a question and um, at this time, otherwise we'll move forward. Yes, there's um, one more question from um, Ms. Chadwick. Um, go ahead and unmute your microphone and, and share your comment with us. Hi, this is Shala Chadwick again. Um, just a thought that I was, you know, they're, they're planning on building a huge um, facility, housing facility, where the water agency is on college there now. Um, I'm supposing that most of those kids will be attending Biella Elementary. Um, so maybe just take that into consideration that in the future there will probably be a lot more uh, children too. So that's all, thank you. All right, thank you. No, I really appreciate hearing that. Um, that's great information. We've got a question from Patty. Patty, I'm gonna give you permission to speak. Please unmute your microphone and share your comment with us. Hi, yes, thank you. My daughter was wondering if there's a way to get a spinning mushroom. Well, I appreciate that. Um, that feedback, we'll, we'll definitely include that and look at that as we move forward. We're not quite at the decision-making uh, point for what type of spinning <laughs> component, but we'll include that in there. So I appreciate it. Thank you. The next question comes from Valerie. Please unmute your microphone and share your comment with us. Can you, Valerie, would you still like to speak? If so, can you- Hi, sorry about that. Uh, so my family's been spending some time at the new coffee park and we've been really impressed with it. We can tell that there was a lot of community input there. Um, we've been impressed with um, there being activities for all ages, uh, like the permanent ping pong tables and cornholes that are spread throughout the park and wondering if there's any thought for that sort of thing for our park. I, yeah, I appreciate that, Valerie. I think I did see that comment come up before, and uh, those are nice components. It's it's sometimes uh, hard to grab um, a wide variety of of youth and and adults as well. With um, and those are two components that are really uh, really popular, and we uh, we could definitely do something like that. So uh, we will include uh, your comments as we move forward and. And, and see what we can come up with as we move forward. So thank you. Okay, there is a um, comment from Jimmy. Jimmy, I'm giving you permission to speak. Um, please unmute your microphone and share your comment with us. Hi, yeah, I was just looking up. Um, there, there are some like uh, sand bees or something. They're like little blue bees that are hanging out in the sand. I grew up with them. Um, they never seem to sting anybody. I just was hoping we could continue to keep some sort of a sand habitat for them. I don't know if they're, I don't think they're endangered or anything. I just have never seen them anywhere else and they're kind of cool. So I was just kind of hoping we could 
keep some sort of a continued habitat or look into that as we progress. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I think um, as part of our process earlier, sand was um, a big uh, a big desire. So it, it looks like we'll have some sort of sand component going forward um, in, in the park, and um, we're happy to do that. Yeah, and that'll that'll help that um, those bees. And I don't know, Haley, Haley, if you have any background in that, but um, I haven't heard of that particular um, thing with sand. Definitely our water areas. Uh, so I appreciate it. Are there any other questions um, or comments at this point? There are no hands raised at this time. Are there any other comments before we close this part of the presentation? Okay. I don't see any hands though. So. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and um, look at some student work <laughs> from our Biela Elementary School. Um, oh, and before we do, thank you. Um, I did want to, um, here is the web address, or essentially if you go to the city's website and look up recreation and parks, um, there's a park project section in there and this information surveys. So if you're talking to your fellow neighbors or folks in the neighborhood that weren't able to attend tonight, they can certainly go and see this uh, presentation as well as provide us with a survey um, information at srcity.org park or slash forward slash park dash projects and uh, provide that information there. And so let's look at some student student work. <laughs> um, and I'll do a little bit of talking, but I'm going to turn it over to Haley mostly. This is um, this is a wonderful work from um, the time where we were able to meet with some uh, students from Biela Elementary. So I'll turn it over to Haley and we can, she can talk us through it. Sure, um, the, there was a school-wide, a principal um, put, put together a school-wide um, brainstorm with um, all, all classes in the elementary school, which was really exciting. We got to meet with them virtually um, and talk a little bit about uh, the project. We talked to them about um, what a landscape architect is um, and what, the city um, agents do um, kind of talked about the whole process and then they had um, about a week to come up with a drawings or text and precedent images um, of what they would like to see for the playgrounds so um, we had everywhere we had um, children in kindergarten all the way up to um, within sixth grades participating so here's some of their work really great ideas about Climbing walls and mountain tunnels. Um, swings are really popular. Um, I really love that Jasmine was thinking about materiality. Um, she's maybe a feature designer there, already thinking about uh, what things are made of and how they go together, which I uh, really enjoyed. Um, lots of other great ideas of how um, components work, what, and also thinking about look and feel um, and, and themes, a lot of the things that we talked about tonight. So thank you, uh, Biela, and uh, for working with us. Thanks, Haley, for walking through that. And thanks again to the students. Uh, they've done a lot of hard work already, and we're excited to, to get started uh, um, and, and looking forward to our next, um, next time we can meet again with the, with the neighbors. Um, so the, the next thing on our schedule is we will come back to you in early spring with another meeting similar to this. And we are going to post signage at our park and at some of our other parks in this quadrant. We will also be um, emailing uh, the link to our principal. Uh, the other place where you can get access to um, the next virtual meeting is on our website as well, but this is our next step. And then you can see after that, we have uh, the remainder of the steps. Um, after we're done uh, with the design part of it, then we'll start on construction, which uh, as Haley mentioned before, we these this is the plan. Sometimes things change. Sometimes we need to take longer in the community or sometimes they move faster than we imagined. So, uh, but this is the plan. So it, essentially uh, once we have finalized um, the plan you've all come up with, um, 
we're looking at um, construction in 2022, which seems really far away, but uh, in, in the terms of design and construction is just around the corner. Uh, so let's go to the next slide and just a reminder there that here's some additional contact information. So as I mentioned early on, uh, Tim Bernard, who's doing wonderful work helping us host this meeting uh, behind the scenes is, is uh, managing this project for us and uh, working with our consultant team. And here's his email. Uh, if you'd like to email him, if you have anything else to add or any questions and his phone number as well. Um, and then of course, there's that website again. So that's really key. Everything related to this project will be on that website and continually updated anytime there's a new meeting, um, anytime there's new information, uh, the survey will be there. All the information that we went over tonight will be there. Um, and Seth, I, I hope that you definitely encourage your neighbors or anybody else you know that would like to participate or like to know what's going on um, to go to the website or contact us otherwise. Um, and if there's any neighborhood groups or anything like that besides the elementary school that we should be reaching out to do, we would love to hear from you. Uh, and I'm going to turn it back to Haley real quick to see if there's any last words um, that we need to include before we conclude. <laughs> no last words from me. Um, if you, again, just as a reminder, there's, there's going to be several more opportunities to provide feedback. Um, and at that next meeting, we'll look at some master plan options um, and we'll um, have more to share. We're looking forward to it. Okay, well, thank you so much. Well, I just wanted to thank everybody very much for your time. Um, I know everybody's really, really busy and uh, we can't thank you enough for participating. We've heard some fantastic feedback here tonight and I feel a lot of energy towards this project. So I'm really excited um, to see what we can all come up with. And, um, and I'm excited to meet with you all again um, in late spring or in a couple months or a month or so. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. <laughs> so thank you and have a fantastic evening. Good night.